Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. So we are building on with our combined arms in DCS World and today we're on our first of the Corvettes. So we're looking at ships obviously and the first Corvette. It's the Greecher class Corvette that we're looking at. Uh, now we're not entirely sure exactly which hull we have in DCS so we, we don't know the exact hull but we know the type that we've got and that's going to be good enough for looking at it. So what we're going to first of all is just look at some general information here in Wikipedia so you get an idea of what the class was about. Then we're going to home in on our particular, not our particular hull but our particular subtype, go through it and then we're going to jump into DCS, fire the guns, shoot the missiles and stuff like that. So the Grisha class Corvette was a series of anti-submarine Corvettes built in the Soviet Union between 1970 and 1990 and later by the Russian Russia and Ukraine. These ships had a limited range and were used only in coastal waters. They were equipped with a variety of anti-submarine warfare weapons and with an SAN for surface-to-air missile launcher, and this changed a bit over the years, all were fitted with retractable stabilizer fin, uh, fin stabilizers. Uh, that's nothing of any interest. So, the different variants. We've got the Mark 1, the Grisha 1, the 1124.1. 12 ships were built uh, 1970 to 1974 and decommissioned in, well, they only lasted a few years and decommissioned in 1979. That's weird. They must have been out of date by the time they were built. Uh, then the Grisha 2, the 1124P, were built for the KGB border guard and marked with P for something I can't pronounce, meaning on the border. This class was built only in one of Vladivostok and Zelonoldolsk. Um, these ships had a second 57mm mounting, uh, gun mounting replacing the SAN4 system. Um, forward. 17 ships were built in the 1970s. Two were transferred to the Ukrainian Navy and around seven are in service with the Russian Maritime Border Guard. The Grisha 3 class 112 Mike were built in the late 70s and early 80s. These ships incorporated several small scale modifications including a 30mm gun and new electronics. 34 were built. About 20 remain in, in Russian service. Two ships were in service in the Lithuanian Navy until 2009. Uh, Mark IV, a single Grisha Mark IV, class 1124K ship was built in that place there. This ship was a test ship for the SAN-9, uh, which is the TOR, SA-15, missile system and later was decommissioned. The Grisha V, this is what we got, uh, which have subclasses 1124M, uh, Mike Echo and 1124.4, which is the one we get. Ships were built between 1985 and 1994. This incorporated further modifications with the twin... 57mm guns being replaced by a single AK-176-76 mil gun. 30 ships were built, about 28 remain in the Russian Navy. And that's all we're going to go through there. Uh, now we've got information here, the technical information that we're going to go through, but because there were so many of these vessels, this information we just found not to be accurate enough to the particular vessel type that we got, the 112.4. So rather than use this technical information, we put together our own technical information, or Daishi has. Uh, I should mention, hello Daishi, by the way. Hello. So just uh, let me just quickly look. There are the builders, here are the operators, Soviet Navy, Soviet Border Troops, Russian Navy, Russian Coast Guard, Ukrainian Navy, Georgian Navy, Luth Lithuanian Naval Force. Succeeded by that class there, which looks pretty cool. Maybe we'll get that one day. And a total of 88 of the Grisha Corvettes were completed, and somehow we've got more than that laid up, I don't know. And laid up, we think they're not, you know, they're not scrapped. Uh, we think they're just uh, waiting as a reserve, don't we? Uh, some of them, yes. So, let's jump to the tech information. Okay, engineering. We have 1 times 18,000 horsepower Mike 8 gas turbine. We have 2 times 10,000 horsepower M507A1 P diesels or 2 times 10,000 horsepower M507A-2 diesels. Total, that's a total of 38,000 horsepower. Well, that's a lot. Uh, the latest frigate we looked at, and a frigate is 4 times as heavy as this, um, was only 40,000 horsepower. So that's amazing. We should get some good speed out of this thing. Maybe that's something to do with what free, uh, Corvette is. Maybe it's meant to be fast. Three fixed pitch propellers. Um, just before we go, I wonder why they've got a mixture of diesel and gas turbine. Any idea on that? I was reading about it, and one of the things that's supposed to be about this class is the ability to go in there, drop off its sono buoys and such, and go off really quick. I think... That would be why it has the diesels, because gas turbines, you want to keep them spinning. You can't really just fire them up really quick like a, mm -hmm. like a um, diesel. So I think it, that's got something to do with it. 
Mind you, I'm just going to jump back to Wikipedia quickly and just see if it's got uh, the crew, a uh, complement 60, 60 men on it, and we've got the weight. Uh, they're all around a thousand tons, so Corvette around a thousand tons. One thing I forgot to mention too is that the the propellers it's got is uh, fixed pitch, where newer ships can change it around. I think that might be another reason why it's got the turbines. Is I oh, sorry, the diesels is to allow it to do like that asymmetric thrust, like you'd ah. have on like an F. That's interesting. Well done. Okay, I just realised I hadn't started at the top, so my bad. I'm just going to run to the top. So we have a project. Uh, so degrees of five displacement, 910 tons for our model, or near enough our model. And full, it's uh, 1,055 metric tons. Length 71 meters. Beam 10 meters. Draft 3.7 meters. Speed 31.67. That's the fastest vessel we've seen so far. So that makes sense with the power. Range uh, 2,700 nautical miles at cruise of 50 knots. Engineering we've looked at. Sensors standby. So we have a MR. Dash 320 Topaz two two dimensional air and surface search radar, obviously um, inferior to the modern 3D radar. NATO code name Strut Pair. Right, I'm going to struggle to understand this. This is two times Strut Curve. Does that mean something to us? Yep. Uh, what it is is that the Strut Pair is basically two of these Strut Curve radars just put back back to back on the rotating right. platform. Roger. Okay. Fine. Uh, the range of this radar is 0 0.6 kilometers to 278 kilometers, about just under 200 miles, and an altitude of zero surface to 18,000 meters, which is uh, near enough uh, 60,000 feet. Uh, we have a 4R338 radar, NATO name POP Group, uh, with, for the SA8, or is a SA8 Gecko tracking radar, so that's for the SAMs. We have an MR-123 Vimepel A, NATO code name Base Tilt. By Base Tilt? Have I said that right? Yeah, I have. Um, I don't know. It's weird with the spelling. It is weird, isn't it? Um, the fire control system. Oh, it's a fire control for the AK-176 gun and MR-630 Seawiz. Oh, well, Seawiz is cool. On tower behind the AK-630 uh, mic. Okay, uh, then we have an MR-212 Vegach uh, navigation radar. So that's a yep, navigation radar. Um, we're getting used to spotting them now. We have a MGK-335 Platina uh, NATO call sign Bullnose active passive hull sonar. So this is for submarine detection, isn't it? Yep. So passive is for listening for submarines. Active. Um, for active, would we say that is kind of um, trying to fool the sonar of a attacking submarine? Yep. Active is when you're actively pinging, whereas passive, you're just listening. Ah, right. I wasn't aware. Thank you. We have an MG-339T Shellon, Shilan, a NATO, NATO call sign Foletail. God, why do they have such weird names? I have normal names. Uh, active and passive VDS. Uh, I usually get you to explain the VDS, Daishi. Yep, uh, variable depth sonar. You can dip it under under the water. There is a uh, hot, cold water boundary that will. It really messes with sound, and you can use this to try to get under there to get like a better sound picture. Roger. So in my mind, it's something like a bit like a torpedo on a chain that we drag behind the vessel. Roger. Something similar to that. I haven't seen a picture of this thing yet, though. Roger. Right, so we then have an MGS-407K sonar anchor. I'm going to struggle with this. Sonar anchor, sonar radio boobies. You're definitely going to need you for that one. Okay, Um, I was reading up on this guy, and how it works is it's, it's like an anchor attached to a sonar that's got like a radio buoy on the top. Mm -hmm. And uh, this particular model, when the submarine gets close to it and it detects it, it releases the, the radio buoy to go up to the top of the water. And then you get a radio signal saying, hey, there's something here. And then you just go and try to deal with the sub after that. Roger, is it mainly for detection then? As far as I can gather, yes. Interesting. Never heard of this before. So, okay, cool. Uh, we have an MI-110K slash KM Thermal and MI-110R Radiation, so two different types of wake detectors. My understanding of this is it's different ways of detecting the wake of a submarine. That's right, isn't it? 
Yep, the same guys on the Cravax. Same on the Cravax, yeah, Roger. Okay, very good. Uh, we have an MG26 Costa underwater communication system. What the deuce is that? I remember hearing about like a few ships that's got like this. You can use it to speak with subs, I, I think. Because um, I know there's different frequencies you can communicate with underwater. Like, I know to use uh, ultra low frequency to get through the waves. I think this is something similar, but it uses a higher frequency. Mm. Right, we have a KMG 1 Du Cassandra sonar classification system. Is that something we don't know about? or? Um, what this guy does is it's designed to classify what you hear down there. So instead of just trying to figure out what that rumble is, they'll be like, oh, this could be a nuclear oh, submarine right. or something that... Yeah, understood. Cool. We have a Bizan or Bizan dash 4B ECM suite electronic countermeasures consisting could consist of an ARP dash 50R radio, radio direction finder. A do we know what that is? A radio direction finder. I know. No, I don't know what that is. Um, it's think of it as sort of like an RWR. You use it to figure out the direction of radio signals coming in. So you could yeah. use that as an RWR. Yeah, and yeah, I've got you. Okay, makes sense. A nickel IFF or nickel KM so IFF system. Okay, a Spectra F laser detection warning system. Uh, is that something to do with laser guided weapons being shot at our ship? Not sure. The problem was I couldn't really find much about the ECM suite or any of these guys, and I'm pretty sure it's part of the suite, but not all of it. Uh, we have two times PK16 DK load. Decoy launchers and four times PK10 decoy launchers. Do we think these are the chaff flare and possibly the other type of decoys? Uh, countermeasures? Um, these, I think these just launched uh, chaff and flares. Roger. Okay, so we'll see them on the ship probably. Right, everyone's favorite bit the weapons. So first we go into SAMs. So we've got one times two launches of OSA MA2. So the OSA is a 70s, 60s 70s radar guided missile with a range of about five or six miles. It is NATO call sign is the SAN4 Gecko, and you've probably been shot at it by a hundred times from the ground unit variant. Next, we've got uh, these are not implemented on our vehicle, but just purely for interest. At some point, one times two or one times four Strela three. These are the IR missiles, guided Fox twos, NATO calls an SAN eight Gremlin or Igla IR again, um, the SAN ten Grouse uh, Sams, but we won't have that. Next is the gun, uh, one times one seventy six mil AK one seven six one hundred fifty two about three hundred and four rounds total. Um, what does 152 belt mean? I just was trying to type in shirt. That means it's got an ammo belt with 152 rounds in it. It's got anti-air, I'm guessing that is, high explosive proximity fuse, or high explosive fragmentation. Okay. So, right. Yep. Uh, so it doesn't have... Right, okay. Yeah, I guess there's no reason for it to bar my piercing, is it? And It wouldn't shoot tanks with it, so... Um, I've noticed a lot of like guns modern nowadays don't really seem to have that much armor piercing. Variable rate of fire, 30, 60, 120 rounds per minute. So that could be really fast. That could be like dun 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 like that. That's quite impressive for such a big gun. Uh, 120 RPM fires, 75 round burst and requires 30 minute cooldown. Makes sense. That's probably what we'll see on DCS. Uh, 1 times 6. So does that mean 6? Yes, it does. No, it means 6 barrels. So it means one gun with six barrels of 30 mil, an AK-6 uh, 30M Seawiz. These things are mental. They make the uh, US Seawiz look tiny. It's like having a Gaway on your ship. 2,000 round belt, 3,000 rounds in total, 4,000 to 5,000 RPM. And uh, yeah, that will rip anything to pieces. Uh, obviously, it's for anti... Um, well, it can be used for anti-anything, really, but uh, it's mainly for anti-missile. So defense... Uh, we've got torpedo tubes. This is a submarine hunter at the end of the day. We've got two times two 530 torpedo tubes. Uh, we've got lots of information about those there. I don't think we're going to go through them all now, but that's there if you're interested in them. And the reason I'm not that interested is we don't have torpedoes in DCS. Maybe we will one day, but we certainly don't at the moment. Next is one times 12 barrel RBU 6000 Smirch 2. Do you want to go through that? Yep. Uh, these are uh, depth charges that are launched from... Uh... Like you'll see it in 
in the game where it's got like a 12, it's like a 12 tube launcher in front of it, the uh, bridge. It just, it'll launch them at, uh, at uh, subs close to your ship. Roger. And is this thing below a separate two depth charge racks of 12, or is this the same? Um, no, it's a separate system. So two depth charge racks of 12 of BB1, 300 pounds, think it's at that many feet per second, or BPS. So what are these? So the S RBU 600 is like a 6,000, like a mortar. What is this? Is this a mortar or? No, this is like your traditional depth charges. Uh -huh. Like even the BB1 was used during World War II. Wow. Um, and it's still used in some instances where the torpedoes want to be very useful. So maybe you're like at really close waters and it's not going to be able to track it, I suppose. Roger. Uh, okay, that's fine. And 16 anti-submarine mines, presumably. Yep. Roger, and that's that, which you can lay out, out the back. Here is Daishi Sources. Thank you very much for doing that, Daishi. So what we're going to do is pop in to DCS and have a good look at it and use some weapons. Now, we're not going to be able to use any of the anti-submarine uh, de uh, we won't be able to use the decoys, we won't be able to use the torpedoes, we won't be able to use Estrella because we don't have it. We won't be able to use the RBU-6000 or the depth charges. We will be able to use the AK-176 gun, uh, various things. We will be able to use the Seawiz and we will be able to use the Gecko. So, stand by. Okay, welcome back. We've got our Grisha here. Uh, now, it is Hull 149 here, but we couldn't find... Uh, the actual whole numbers uh, making sense with any historical data so I'm not going to worry too much about that let's have a look at the ship itself first of all it is obviously a Corvette it's super small compared to everything we've looked at we've looked at uh, cruisers we've looked at frigates so far and this is like a third of the size of a cruiser or something like that it's tiny let's start from the front at the front we've got first of all the SA-8 Gecko launcher which is this guy here it's twin armed the way it works is it can fire two weapons, uh, more or less at once, or in sequence. Then this guy here attracts down into the magazine, collects two new missiles and then comes up and can fire again when ready. It was uh, superseded by the vertical launch system in, what, the 80s, maybe? Maybe late 70s? Yeah, 70s, 80s, that sounds about right. Roger, we've got the RBU uh, 6000s here. These are the anti-submarine mortars. They fire the kind of miniature depth charges, if you like. Uh, towards the submarines we've got uh, the radar for the SA-8 uh, what was it called? POC group this is POC group and I think this is one that will track hostiles so it'll actually turn around we'll see when it happens but I think it, uh, uh, it turns around and tracks us we've got the 2D double face search radar here and can you remind me of that please? strut pair strut pair and it's yep okay so that's that We've got the communications radar there. It's not spinning for some reason. Uh, I should say at this point, this is a low uh, definition model in DCS. It's you know it's probably 15, 20 years old or something. Because of that, unfortunately, it won't work fully. It won't have a proper damage model like the modern ships do in DCS. So it was going to be a bit cartoony, but it's you know it's what it is. It's probably never going to be changed. So uh, we'll just get used to it. Next, we've got the chimney stack here. Three different engines. We've got the torpedoes here, the 533s, so two there and two there. Do you want to give a rough description of how they're actually launched, Aishi? Yeah, uh, they're launched through air pressure. You you tilt the tubes out towards the water and then you uh, pressurize the tube and it'll launch. Cool, roger. Right, next thing we have the c uh, communications uprights here. Anything you want to say about them? Yeah, those are high frequency whips more likely than not. Roger. Then we've got the guidance here for the AK-176. Um, can you remind me of the name of that, please? Bass Tilt. Bass Tilt. So that is the radar tracker uh, for the gun here. This is a radar-directed gun, which is what allows it to shoot at air targets, as well as ground targets, as well as surface targets. We've got the Sea Wiz here, the 30mm Sea Wiz, which... I think has its own no it has yeah it does have its own radar sensor somewhere I'm not sure if it's in here in the dome or somewhere else probably in the dome actually send actually um, when I was looking it up I think they both used bass tilt like okay. I don't know if it's simultaneous Roger yeah very good okay that's fine uh, so uh, so this is just the 30 mil six barreled cannon then and it's pretty devastating to say the least We've got the 76mm radar guided gun here, capable of the rate of fires and two types of ammo, as we've discussed. 
for dropping the depth charges and the mines we've got these rails down here you can see uh, well we, we think that this is what these are for um, so you would usually have if this was in a red state ready to be used this ship then it would have the 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 units the depth charges or whatever here ready to be slid down these rails um, and they think they come out of a magazine possibly here we stand to be corrected we're not entirely sure um, anything you want to add to the depth charges or the um, or the thing is uh, the thing is depth charges still have a use nowadays but it's usually very limited where torpedoes can't really be used very well you would still result the depth charges Roger okay and we were talking about how bad the accuracy was weren't we yeah um, it's like during World War II they've launched about like 60,000 of them and I think there was only like 18 confirmed kills yeah that's a pretty shit hit rate um, okay, anything you want to add to the basic model? Um, I don't know. I'm interested to see what she'll do. So let's get her moving and let's get her firing. Because uh, it is meant to be a tutorial, I will show how to move it. I have to be in, first of all, I should say, in either a Game Master or a Tactical Commander slot to control this vehicle. Blue Game, com game Master. Okay, we're going to click the vehicle here. And if we want it to move, well, first of all, we can set its ROE, whether it wants to fire whenever it can, whenever it wants to, or whether it returns fire only, or whether it holds. And the state here, whether we want it in a green state or a prepared battle station's red state or automatic, uh, keep it in red. And if we want to move it, we will set path from here to, let's say, here. That's a left click there, and we can add another waypoint if we want. Left click, and then right click to confirm the course. And uh, we can choose the speed in miles per hour. And because it's a fast Corvette, we're going to put it right up. It can't actually do 56 miles per hour, I don't think. But um, it just allows you to put it there. Uh, next, we're going to add a target and make it shooty shooty something. So it's going to use the gun for this almost certainly. We will be within range. We'll be with a, about 6 miles. No, 10 miles. Um, actually, it might be out of range. We'll try it see what happens. If I want to add just a static target in the terrain to fire a single shot, I can go add target. And just put that down there and let's watch the vessel oh it's on the back Daiichi it's on the back this isn't going to work right <laughs> I just realised that the gun's on the back so there's no way it's going to shoot so what we'll do is get a little bit closer and then we'll turn the vessel around okay I wonder in fact if he's got a line of sight now where is the target the target is kind of the target is there let's try try to shoot him from here it's not quite the right angle but let's give it a go I hate these ships with the guns on the back it's so frustrating uh, add target in those boys Watch the vessel, here he goes. Ah! And because of this, the way this type of targeting works, it'd probably take a while for him to shoot, get to battle stations and fire. Boom! Just going to have a look at those guys. That shell's going to be um, a little while in transit, obviously. Oh! I think it just missed, uh, look to the left there, it's all... Oh, never mind. Oh, we got I thought I saw a splash. Pretty accurate. That was a sailboat. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> lols. Um, let's give it another shot, shall we? So another single shot of attack target. And add target somewhere that's not actually a unit, just in the space there. Yeah. See where that comes down. Okay, so that's firing uh, controlled like that. Now the other way to get it to fire is to set it to fire and we move it within what it considers visual range of these guys and it will fire for itself. So we're just going to change its uh, its waypoints at the moment. So what I'm going to do is set a new path from scratch. I'm going to stop any attack, set a new path from scratch. Let's set him kind of here and then go there and see if we can get that to uh, function. Oh, the uh, failing's turned. Or the uh, Sea Wiz turn. <laughs> Boom. Beautiful destruction. Impressive gun. Pretty good gun, right? I remember reading they were trying to compete with the uh, the Molina gun on the uh, Oliver Hazard Perry, and 
<laughs> putting up a challenge, although I'm not yeah. sure if it's as accurate. Watch it, yeah, it's not that I'm on this thing. Rate of fire is amazing. Yeah, I think this is like goes. You can use it to help shoot down uh, missiles, which is nice for that rate yeah. of fire. Yeah, imagine how much lead that's going to put in the air. You can see the bullets. If you look closely enough, you can see the bullet. Oh, that's cool. I didn't think they would render that. Yeah, so you can even follow the bullets with the camera. I just can't remember how. Shame the Sea Wiz didn't fire. That would have been sick. Must be slightly out of range. Oh, look at that. Let's the devil. Your wish has been granted. Oh, how fun. That is causing some good havoc. That really is, isn't it? It's a good couple of miles away as well. I know it doesn't, I know it looks close, but it's a good couple of miles. Go on fire again, I dare you. Very good stuff. Right, that's that. Next, we're going to use it to fight ships. Now, it's only going to use the same weapons, but um, I just want to see what it looks like. Oh, look at that! Oh man, it's. I think it's procked all the smoke. Yeah. Uh, smokes. What immensely good fun that was. Right, next thing, um, we're going to show it with anti-ship. It's not an anti-ship Corvette, and it will only use the same two same weapons. But we like to make food ships fight each other because it makes us happy, so stand by. Okay, spectators, right. I'm um, not going to control everything, they should just fight this time. We've got against our lovely little Corvette is a whopping great frigate. Oliver has a Perry, more modern, more dangerous, and like twice the size. Um, because we don't have any contemporary Corvettes, this is the only Corvette in the game to go against it, so. It's probably going to die, but let's see what happens. So we need to get them firing at each other. So 39 miles at the moment. We need to get them closer. Both are set to battle stations. So we should get some boom boom. Yeah, funny thing was when I was researching this ship, there was a lot of people complaining that this ship was too hard to kill. Um, Which one? Yeah, the was, Corvette? Uh, yeah, from like a few years ago. They were like, this ship's too hard to kill. It might be. We're probably going to find it doesn't have a damage model. That's what we're finding about these old models. Whereas the new ones do. It only takes damage from explosions. Roger. Uh, 26 miles. Let's keep going. What we're probably going to find is that Hazard Perry just launches a bunch of harms. Uh, sorry, harms. Um, what are they called? Uh, harpoons and just kills this guy straight away. But you never know. No, I... Because it's like, the Osa might not be able to track it, but I think the Bass Tilt might. Mm, well, we'll see. Uh, we're broadsiding, so we've, we've got, you know, fingers crossed. I think that's the range of the gun there. Oh, here we go. Pew, pew. So those are harpoons at uh, 52 feet. Looking for any movement of the sensors, nothing's moving yet. I'm going to go to the uh, choose slot, Game Master, mm, blue. Oh, I'm going to put it to red, but it's not working at the moment. You see, I'll click off and it just goes back to green. So there's nothing I can do to set it to red uh, status. Uh, just something with ships. Anyway, let's see what happens. Uh, where are we going? Come on, shoot it down, shoot it down! Yeah, I guess I'm banking on the sea was being able to do something. I think it's just going to sit there like a dickhead and not defend itself. Come on, wake up, you mug! About to get shot, for God's sake! Use your 
gun! Use your gun! This is the reason why I don't go to casinos. Piece of shit. I think stuff. it might miss. Oh, I won't. Well, there's not much we can do about it, really. It's, it just doesn't want to defend itself. It's probably trash. The boat's probably trash now. Well, you'll have to blame Wags for that. There's nothing we can do to make it defend itself. It's still firing missiles. Well, it's still alive, technically. I don't think it's going to last much longer. I really want to see that sea whiz going. Don't tell me it's invincible. Is it not going to die or something? It's dead. It's dead. Right, well, oh. that was disappointing, but that's just how it is at the moment, so nothing we can do about that. Uh, right, next, why don't we go and have a look at the anti-air defense, see what we can get to fire. So let's reset that and be the F-15. Yeah, and I wonder if it's more something to do with cruise missiles not being able to be detected properly. Or it could be just certain ones, I'm not sure. Because it was like in, the, in that coffee campaign, they were able to deal with the... Cruise missiles going at the cruisers, well, mostly. They could. They 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 shot down the harpoons as well. The ATHs, didn't they? So yeah. I guess it was more. That was the Kuznetsov, so it was a lot more modern. Right. So we've got four nine. That's the Oliver Hazard Perry. Let's see if we can get the um, uh, strut plate or whatever it's called. Strut plate. Strut yep. pair. Strut plate or pair. Yeah, strut pair. Uh, right. We've got a while to go yet. Okay. I've got the nails. It is um, HP. HP. Um, so it's not strut pair in DCS, it's something else. Which is interesting. I'm not sure what HP is. I'll have to try to find that. Hmm, interesting. I, it might be something called half plate. Like, remember how top plate had the two yeah. things on it? I think half plate it only has one of them. Roger. I wonder why it's coming up as that, though. Maybe it's the only way it could simulate it. Why don't you see it? Oh, spiking. Where are you? Oh, I see him. It's tiny. It's so small. Compared to what we're used to, anyway. Range is about, I don't know, six or seven miles, I guess. I can just barely see it now. It's... Yeah, same here. I thought it was a speck on my monitor. We're used to big battleships. Well, not battleships, but you know what I mean. We're used to big, um... Uh, cruisers. Big cruisers and oh, frigates. Dump that shit in the water, boys. Gonna dump that shit in the water. Boom! Down you go. See how close we can get. I thought I just saw a 76 mil in the air, but I may have, may have got that wrong. So, the time to attack would be when it's reloading the arm. The arm takes a few seconds to reload. Like, 30 seconds to reload. So the time to attack is maybe now. Um, there it is. It's defenseless! You, you're defenseless! Until the re arm reloads. Oh shit! Scrap that missile. Over G, over G, over G. Ah! Over G, over G, over G. Wow. That was close. You're not hitting Supercap. No, you're not, not today. Right, the arm's recharging. Just gotta go in now for the kill. Oh, great! Sea Whiz! Guns Chink Defensive! Guns Chink Defensive! Oh, God, it's not gonna hurt! It is, it is gonna hurt! Is it a roof firer? Can it fire up here? I think you're safe. Yay! The defense of all old Russian 70 ships. Uh, sorry, the weak point. Come in from above. See if we can get that 20, 76 mil against me. So if I stay in about half a mile range, that gecko won't be able to shoot. Ah, that will though. Put up a better fight than the Kravak did. Yeah. 
someone get that big gun firing at me. Don't think I can. Sea Wiz is so deadly. Hmm. Okay. Let's go for our final move. Anything else you want to test before I go for our, our crim to the crim? I got nothing. Hold on. It's alright, it's a nice little boat. It's a shame it doesn't defend itself. Right. Sorry, sir. But your time is over. Eighty percent. Eat lead and die. Hey, um, have you enjoyed that? Anything you want to add to that, Lord Daishi? Yeah, I was reading earlier, like some earlier posts, how some people were complaining this was hard to kill, but I could see why, despite how tiny it is. Yeah, that was um, that was hard. To, that was hard to find, genuinely, compared to a cruiser. It's so hard to find. Yeah, interesting. Cool. All right, um, we'll pack that up. Um, we will be doing another ship later, and uh, hope you enjoyed that, and see you later.